Kevin Raposo here with speedyphotographer.com and today we're gonna to be giving a beginner photographer the $10,000 Sony A1 camera kit while giving a professional photographer the iPhone 13 Pro Max and comparing their work to see what they come up with. Let's start off by meeting our two photographers. The beginner in this contest is AJ who has very little photography experience. AJ is actually a professional kinesiologist with his own practice and he runs his own YouTube channel known as Simple Strong Science. And because of that YouTube channel, AJ does have a basic understanding of the fundamentals, shutter speed, aperture, and that kind of thing. And before this competition, he also brushed up on his skills through my online photography school, Speedy Photographer. Now the professional in this contest is Luis, who specializes in portrait photography. He's been shooting with a variety of different Canon and Sony gear for over a decade, running local photo walks and sharing his knowledge with others. Now the competition itself was pretty simple. Both contestants were assigned four categories to shoot, urban or architecture, automotive, street portrait, and low light photography. Now, all four of these categories were shot in predetermined areas, so both photographers had similar opportunities to wander around in the same type of environment. With that said, both photographers took their pictures separately and they were not allowed to watch each other work. The only thing that they were allowed to use was the camera and a tripod. Now, after editing, both photographers submitted their pictures to me for the big critique, and they were limited to a maximum of three pictures per category. If you stick around to the end of this video, I'll be revealing those pictures and sharing a critical analysis of where they both did well and where they both struggled so that you can learn and avoid making the same mistakes. One last disclaimer before we jump into the shoot, AJ was not familiar with the Sony A1, so I provided him with some very basic support along the way. If he knew what he wanted to accomplish, but he wasn't sure which dial to turn or which button to press, I jumped in and I showed him how. But the composition, the timing, and the actual settings, those are all up to him. Now that you understand how the contest will work, let's jump in and I'll show you how the shooting process went down. Now, I'm not seeing a lot of cars here, so I could play with reflections on vehicles, maybe um, getting a little bit of the background into the windows. So like, if you have clean windows, you can get some like really nice reflections going on. I kind of want to make sure that the sun, I think, is facing, so then it's a little more bright. Yeah, how about I get down? This is what photographers do, right? They get on their knee and they point and shoot. I want to get more cars on the right side and it looks like we're getting maybe one more in like five or 10 seconds. So I'm going to wait a little bit to get one more red light trail on the side. I'm going to cross the street and find some inconspicuous spot to hang out and just wait until I guess pretend to be a fly on the wall. Hmm. If I do this. I'm looking around at what, what I have, what I can play with. I mean, we have a lot of reflection from the building. Uh, do something along the lines of... So I'm seeing the reflections. I have a very nice view of the sky. All right, so I've got AJ and Luis on the line with me here, and we're gonna reveal the pictures that they took for each category, starting with AJ. good stuff AJ you've come a long way from shooting videos on your old iPhone 5 which were completely out of focus I've actually got a few samples of the work that AJ used to do before I started mentoring him now with that said let's take a look at what Luis came up with
Awesome work, Luis. I was honestly pretty surprised when I saw those pictures. I couldn't really believe that they were taken on an iPhone 13. And remember, we're comparing a $10,000 camera to a phone here. It just goes to show you that the person behind the camera is so much more important than the camera that you're using. Luis has put in the time, he's put in the work, he knows how to produce professional quality images with any device. Knowledge and experience trumps everything else here. So from my perspective, there were four key things that I found very interesting about this comparison. The first thing I noticed was the composition. You can see right away how much more direct and intentional Luis is when he's framing up a shot. For example, when shooting the urban or architectural pictures, it barely took Luis five seconds to notice the glass paneled skyscraper and to start composing a layered shot with elements in the foreground and the background. You can really see his experience level when you put those shots up against the ones that AJ took. For example, I can tell that AJ was trying to incorporate the light posts into the foreground here, but they just ended up obscuring his view of the building. Luis also made better use of leading lines, like in this shot with the car in the foreground ground or in this candid street portrait, as well as the rule of thirds, like in this shot of the motorcyclist. In comparison, AJ was kind of just shooting what looked good because he didn't have that first-hand experience and understanding of how to combine elements to create more depth. I would say that this automotive shot here was probably the best one that AJ took because it was one of the very few where he combined elements in the foreground and the background with a shallow depth of field. Now, the second thing I noticed was the editing. You can tell just by looking at a couple of pictures that Luis did a lot to try and make his work stand out. He cropped the pictures, bumped the saturation, boosted his shadows, added some clarity, and as a result, his pictures look a lot more complete. Whereas AJ wasn't as familiar with editing, he didn't really know much about how to use color and framing aside from adding some contrast, and as a result, his pictures look flat, almost like they came straight out of the camera. Now the third thing I noticed, and by the way, I saw this in both of you, it was your comfortability. More specifically, both of you really struggled with the street portraits at first, but Luis became more comfortable with it over time while AJ did not. And there's a reason why I picked this category for the competition. Check this out. These are the first few street pictures that Luis took. He didn't submit these pictures to me as part of the competition, but notice how they've all been awkwardly taken from behind, from eye level. You can clearly see that Luis is not comfortable with people noticing him. This didn't come as a surprise to me because Luis is used to working in a studio setting. But as time went on, you can see that the pictures that he did submit to me in this category became significantly better. Luis was still shooting on an iPhone, so it was tough to get up close and personal but you can see that he starts getting a lot closer to his subjects and composing shots where people are actually facing the camera. Whereas in comparison, AJ's shots were always taken from a mile away the entire time, even when he was zooming in. He even said it himself. I feel kind of awkward doing this, I'm being honest. Moving on, the fourth thing that I noticed was the timing. And this was very obvious when it came to some of the night photography. I basically sent AJ and Luis to a highway overpass and I told them to come up with something interesting. And I expected with very little to shoot that both of them would probably attempt to shoot light trails and I was correct. Now I will say in advance that I felt none of these pictures were very good. AJ was heavily relying on autofocus so he submitted a couple of shots to me that were completely out of focus. Meanwhile, Luis was struggling to keep the iPhone steady on a windy night with a tiny tripod. But the thing is, Luis did a much better job of timing his shots. You can see that his light trails actually fill out most of the shot, and this just comes down to him knowing his shutter speed, having a sense for exposure time, and understanding that you need to be patient when you're shooting. Again, I wanna emphasize that his pictures were pretty blurry, but there's a lot more going on in them than there is in AJ's pictures, which look like they were just taken after a single car passed by. So this was a fun comparison for all of us to see the difference between a beginner and a professional but when it comes down to it, the most important thing is understanding how to use your gear. It doesn't matter that I handed AJ a $10,000 camera kit because he wasn't familiar with it, he wasn't comfortable with it, and he didn't have enough knowledge or experience to use it effectively. And that's what I teach inside of Speedy Photographer, where I mentor students and help you to build that knowledge and experience through dozens of tutorial videos. I'll help you to get the most out of your camera, show you how to compose your shots, how to use color to create impactful images, how I actually make money shooting sports, real estate, corporate events, how to market your work, and much more. There are so many different things that go into taking a great shot. You can have a $10,000 camera kit, but that isn't gonna make you a better or a profitable photographer. And while some of AJ's pictures weren't too bad, I would say that almost none of them would pass for professional quality work. Whereas most of what Luis shot, even though it was on an iPhone, had all of the ingredients that are necessary in order for him to monetize his work. A lot of people leave me comments on YouTube asking me, which camera should I buy? And will a better camera improve my work? And the answer, 
honestly is no. The real estate agents and the sports teams and the corporate clients I work with have literally never asked me about which camera I'm using. They don't care about anything except for the result and how it can be used to market or represent their products and brands. So that's pretty much it. Make sure to check out Speedy Photographer if you want to take your skills to the next level with the gear that you already have. AJ, Luis, thank you very much for being a part of this competition. Luis, where can people find you online? Yeah, guys, if you want to check my photography, you can find me online on luisu.com or on Instagram at luisuphotography. And AJ, how about you? Yeah, guys, feel free to check out my YouTube channel, Simple Strong Science, where I answer common health and fitness questions and perform various demonstrations to help you become stronger, more mobile, and confident in the gym. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more valuable content just like this, and I'll see you in the next video.